All right, guys. So I'm going to do a video on um, V trucks. So 89 to 93 Dodge trucks with VE engine, whether they're intercooled or non-intercooled, kind of not, eh, really doesn't matter. But now we'll do a quick little on that one. So the non-intercooled trucks do actually make a little bit more power than the non-inter, or so then a little bit more power than the intercooled trucks. The reason for that is, is that they have a bigger nozzle. Um, so they put out more fuel. And then there is some differences with the injection pump. I don't know what the flow differences of the injection pump is. I don't physically have the numbers for it. I'm probably, I'll, I'm going to look into it and see. I'll do a video when I do. Um, but they do, there is some differences. Um, you know, your injection lines are different on a non-intercooled from an intercooled. Um, the pump has longer delivery valve holders on it, on the, the V. Um, and then obviously the injectors are one to seven mil, one's a, um, a nine mil. The nine mil is a non-intercooled and the seven mil is the intercooled. Um, now you can use seven mil injectors in a nine mil hole with an adapter, just obviously not the other way around. Now, if you are changing the injectors in your non-intercooled truck and you put a 40 horse over injector that would be in an intercooled truck, you're basically the same. They're not exactly the same, but very similar. Um, so you're not going to gain much horsepower. Maybe, well, I don't know, 10 horsepower. And the non-intercooled runs a different piston than the intercooled. So it has a little bit bigger bowl in it. It's not as it's not a marine size bowl, like in a, a marine piston as far as the 12 valve goes, or as a P pump goes. But they are a bigger bowl in them. I don't know, there again, I don't know the angles just off the top of my head because we're kind of going back in the memory bank a bit here. But anyways, um, so that being said, if you have a non-intercooled truck and you want to make a bunch of power with it, I would intercool it myself personally. Um, you bring the efficiency way up on the system. Now, the non-intercooled trucks do have a smaller turbocharger on them. So even if you are, you just, you have a non-intercooled truck and you want to turn it up, um, I would recommend before you do too much, I would recommend changing the turbo to a, either a, an eight blade or a seven blade, um, HX 35, a seven blade is better than a, a, an eight blade because they move more air and they do spin spool up a little bit faster because of the lighter wheel. But even if you're going to stay non-intercooled and then you just build a, a crossover pipe for it because they, they, they do mount differently. Um, and actually, I, I will be posting a video, hopefully in the next week or so, um, about doing a swap. Uh, a friend of mine, Shay, um, he's got a, a half ton that we put a, a Cummins in um, quite a few years ago now. But we're gonna do. He wants to start turning up a bit, so we're gonna do a turbo swap on that. So I'll show you. Uh, we'll video the turbo swap. So yeah, look forward to that if you want to see it. Um, they're pretty st straightforward, but we'll show the video anyway. So. Um, now that, that, that all being said, um, you know, I, I personally would recommend putting a four inch exhaust on those trucks as well. Um, you know, make sure you have all your fluids changed, make sure your valve sets, you know, good, all that stuff. You just want to make sure the truck's in good running order. Uh, and I said all of this in the P-Pump video as well, but you want to make sure, you know, your, your fuel filter is changed. Um, you know, all that stuff, make sure you don't have any issues as far as that goes. Um, killer dowel pin. You want to do a killer dowel pin fix on these, same as the P pump 12 valves, because it sucks when stuff blows up. Um, and you can go into um, the um, how to in my channel um, under either the P pump 12 valve, a uh, P pump um, 12 valve, or the VE 12 valve, and there is a killer dowel pin video in there. Um, and I'll set it in the description at some point here. I'm just trying to get all this YouTube stuff figured out still. Um, but anyways, so you got that all set up. Now you want to turn, if you want to turn the truck up, um, there's, you have a couple different options. Um, if you, you know, don't want to spend a lot of money to start with, you can do some, you know, you can, you can make them a really nice running truck. They're not huge power, but they're really right, nice running truck for very little money. Um, and that's one thing I really like these they are easy to start. They're not power, a crazy powerhouse, but you know, like these, you know, I had, you know, I've had a bunch of these and some decent power ones, nothing super crazy. But well, maybe well they're gonna do a build. I, I got in mind doing a build video um, and see if we maybe we can beat some numbers. Um, I got some trips tricks up my sleeve. So um, we're, what I'm gonna do is I got a, an AFC housing here. 
which is the top hat part of the um, turbo, or sorry, turbo um, injection pump. It's been a long day. So I got uh, a few things here and can you guys maybe a little straighter to the table here. So I got a few things on the table here. And this is the top of the uh, of a V, and you guys have seen this in a couple of the other videos. It's kind of my tester now, I guess you would say, or mule. So this is the factory. Um, okay, so before we get into fuel pin, um, in well, actually, let's do the fuel pin first. So if you, you don't feel comfortable tearing the top of the injection pump off, which there again I have a video for um, doing the um, RPM spring. It's the RPM spring. Um, the one you'd want for 3200 is a 366, they call it. Um, and there usually be will be, I think this one I've touched enough times, and it's a used spring. I got this 366 wore off. But um, if you don't feel comfortable doing um, the RPM spring um, right away, um, or you're going to have a shop do it, that's fine. Now, one thing you can do is you can do your fuel pin. And so you have a couple options with the fuel pin. And the fuel pin... Um, you literally you, you just take this reference line off, which is gonna it's gonna be a steel line usually. On those is gonna come over to the head. You just you loosen the these pull this out, loosen that off, pull this out. This is gonna be there, and this is gonna have a diaphragm on. I stole the diaphragm for another pump, but this is gonna have a diaphragm on it. And if you look um, on here, there's a dot, and then there will be a. You know, this one's all mushed up, but so there's gonna be a dot. That dot, if you're not playing with the fuel pin, um, usually is gonna be where it was factory set per se. So if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see in there too well. You guys can see the actual fuel pin. All right, the, the pin that comes down in there and it drives. So inside here, it's a it this lever actually pushes on the pin. And that's what actually actuates the pin back and forth. But um, what you want to do, so if you look at this, it's an eccentric flashlight over here. This is an eccentric where the, the it rides on it. And if you look on it, you can actually see there again, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video very well. But right here, you can see where the pin has actually been touching it. And it hasn't been going full draw. So you want the pin to, to go from top to bottom on you know as far as you can in your travel because that means that you're going to get the most ramp travel so you're going to have less fuel than the bottom until you start building boost and then you're going to have more fuel now what you can do with this if you don't want to spend any money and you, you know you don't want to do anything you just want a little bit more power is if you look at this pin it's eccentric and if you set it on a table with with this piece off so a 10 mil and just note um it's so 10 mil 10 mil you can pull the diaphragm off and what you can do is you can roll it around and you can see where the lowest or most pitch in this is and so the high it was actually on this pump it was almost in the high spot not the low spot because the low spot's right here but if you put it in the low spot you will have a little bit more power honestly i don't know how much power difference has been so long not a lot maybe 510 horse maybe maybe but now, what you can do if you want to is you can grind this and put a slope kind of like this pin, which is one I had a bunch built years ago. Um, and this is actually the last one, but uh, I probably, uh, I don't know if I'll have more built or if I'll just sell somebody else's, but because there was a lot of messing around to have them built. But if you grind that and just make sure it's a smooth grind after you're done, you can put more ramp in this. You just got to be careful because if you look at this one, how far it's cut out, which isn't actually near as much as it can be cut out, versus this one, if you cut it out that far, this would fall off, and you don't want this to fall off, because that's going to fall in the pump, and yeah, it's not a good day. But anyways, so you can do that, costs you zero dollars to do that. You can move that around, you can grind it, you know, if you got a grinder, and then a flap wheel, and a little bit of sandpaper, smooth it out real nice, you can do that. And then, also too, when you're in here, um, there's going to be a spring here. This is your, your star wheel. You can mess with the star wheel to get your f the fueling. I will do a video on setting that um, because I don't think that I really went much in depth into it in, in my other videos. But there is a um, 
plastic washer that'll be on here. Take that plastic washer, put it in your glove box. Uh, you want to take that out because that limits travel. Now, um, now if you want to if you want to buy a fuel pin, there is all kinds of different guys that build make fuel pins for these. Uh, Denny T makes them. Um, I think uh, uh, Hungry Diesel has their own. There's all kinds of different ones. BD makes one. There are a bunch of different guys that you can buy them all buy them from a bunch of different places. But um, now if you you know you got that done. Something else when you have this apart, what you can do is, I talked about this in the other video, is you can knock this, this ledge off completely so that the pin is going to go up and down in the bore. So, well, up and down this way, but for you guys up and down like this in here, you can get the most travel out of this as possible, right? Because you want to be able to hit ramp. You want, you know, you want it to start down here. You want it to start down here and then travel up as high as you can because that's going to give you the most range of fuel nicer to drive too right so and then this is your smoke screw you can go up and down with that you want more smoke out or more more fuel out of the hole which is going to give you more smoke farther in less fuel you want out of the hole farther out pretty simple these things are pretty simple and you know you can you can do all this with what I classify what I call a Fisher Price tool set. Now, if you want to get into power screw, you can get into power screw as well, um, which I would recommend turning up a little bit. But what you can do is you can turn this in, which is your power screw, um, which pushes on the um, govern plate. Um, but anyways, what I do for it, you know, in a just an easy set up, I guess you would say is I loosen this nut off and I thread this in truck running until you bump up the RPM about 100 RPM. Now you can go way, way more than this, um, but you want to be careful when you're doing this because if you screw this in too much, you can get govern hang, which is RPM hang, or it'll run away completely. So you want to be real careful when you're doing this. Um, if you are doing this, I recommend to have the intake off and a piece of two by four or a piece of steel plate that you can stuff over the intake and snuff the motor out just in case, because if it runs away, not a good time. So you can thread this in until you, until the RPM goes up 100, 150 RPM. And you never, you know, at that point you don't really have to worry, but I would still recommend having a runaway plate set there ready to go just in case, because you don't know where this has been set. You don't know if somebody's played with it. So now if you're getting in there and doing that, um, you're getting in there and doing that. Sometimes what you're going to have to do is turn the idle down. Now, this is technically, oh, Now, some of you guys have probably figured out by now, I got a bunch of this stuff. Um, I, I'm a bit of a pack rat when it comes to this stuff. So, anyways, now, you, when you need to turn the idle down, here's one of these pumps. And this is obviously a different one than we were just playing with. Let's see if we can get it to stand up here. Okay, so, after you get your RPM uh, jumped up by moving in your power screw... You have your idle adjustment right here and usually this is kind of stuck in the way um i shouldn't say stuck in the way it's hidden away um by a duck by a, the engine you need to crack this nut loose which is 10 mil and then you need to th you're gonna have to pull this out a little bit because you pulled the idle up and just it, it's not going to completely come down but it'll come down a little bit depending on how far you have your power screw in. If you pull that out, that literally you're holding the govern open with the power screw, which is fine. It's just, you wanna make sure you're not in runaway situation, right? 
So you can pull the idle down a little bit. Now, something that I actually never, I have a big long screwdriver that I, or a long screwdriver that I made for doing it. And I've never had an issue doing it. Um, don't get me wrong, sometimes you have to fight with a little bit, but I've never had, but I was watching uh, Decent Garage. Um, he's got a couple, you should check his channel out as well. He's got a couple decent, um, really nice, I should say not decent, really nice um, first gen crew cab trucks. Um, one's a VE, one's a P pump truck. But so you can, you can take one of these picks, which is just a regular pick. This is a snap on one, but just one of these style picks and you can stick it in the hole and turn the idle up and down through the hole. Or you can go in the slot when you get turned the other way and you can turn it up or down. So it's actually kind of a cool, I never thought of that idea. Like I said, I have a big long screwdriver for doing it that I, and I've never really had much of an issue. So I never tried doing it a different way, but you know, like everybody has their, their little tricks and tricks and tips. So that was kind of cool. I thought that was neat. So I thought I would throw that in there for you guys um, that need to adjust that. And then there again, you can also adjust your idle by doing the same thing. Like I said, it was a cool idea. Um, I just uh, thought I'd mention it. And I'll probably, I will do a video um, on setting them um, on truck. And I'll, I'm going to give this a whirl on truck because I've actually never tried it. And then I'll show you the screwdriver that I have for doing it as well. But anyways, um, so that is going to be um, the part one of doing this, uh, doing uh, upgrade on the VE. Um, and we'll get into, uh, maybe we're going to get into some turbocharger stuff, maybe some intercooler stuff. Um, you know, we'll get into doing some of that. And bigger injectors, adding timing, that type of stuff. But anyways, um, hit me up in the comments. You got any questions um, or want me to do any videos? And please subscribe. Um, there again, I see lots of guys are watching, um, but not as many guys are subscribed as watching. So it'd be awesome if you could hit the like button, or sorry, uh, if you could hit the subscribe button, and you can hit the little bell icon, and then you'll know whenever I drop videos. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to drop videos as often as I can. Um, just, you know, try to get content out for you guys and, and uh, you know, that type of stuff. So anyways, um, we'll catch you on the next one.